Hi everyone, welcome back to Dobby Books. I just want to briefly show you something that I know one of the booktubers that I watched was Steve, Steve Donahue, and there was one other person and they were going through all the e-readers they had. I think it was Criminali. And Criminali had some some brands that I was unfamiliar with and I'm not going to remember the name, but it had two O's in it. Really cool brands. And Steve had a bunch of Kindles. And I thought to myself, I, I've purchased Kindles in the past. I, I have a few. And it just kind of inspired me to do a little research. And I checked in my closet here over at the library, in my library, and stacked them up, counted them out. And I have a total of one, two, three, four, five Kindles. I have purchased five Kindles in my lifetime. And I want to go over, just show those to you really quick. When Kindles were coming out, there was that first one, you know, that white one that had a sort of a thick body to it. And my understanding is they tried to shape it like a book would be when you kind of open it, when it's kind of open and the pages kind of have that slant to them. That's how they tried to, to design. That's the design they followed for the first Kindle. I didn't get that one. But the one just after that, um, there were two that came out just almost like back to back. The first one was the Kindle DX and then the other one was just Kindle, right? And I wasn't convinced that the smaller screen on the Kindle was something that I'd be happy with. So I went ahead and I got the Kindle DX. This was my first Kindle. And I loved it because it talked about how you could open a textbook with it and turn it and it would rotate. And I just thought it was fascinating. Look at this. This is the cover page that shows up on my Kindle DX. And I think it's just beautiful. And I forgot how to use but this has like the keyboard at the bottom. And you advance the pages up on the sides. So if I, I think, and then down here is like that little toggle switch. You do that. I'm not sure if it turns the page. If I sort of, let's see. No, I think I have to turn this on. It says home is the top button. I'm there. But if I want to turn this page, oh, slide and release the power. I haven't used this in a while. There's the little power thingy here. See? If you slide it, it wakes up your Kindle. And I'm waiting. There it goes. And there's all my list of books that I have on this, well, almost the list, but this was like the best thing since sliced bread when I first got it. And then, oh, I'm gonna say, let me see, I got my DX in 2010, and I don't know, I didn't write down the month that I got it, but this Kindle DX has a 9.7 inch screen, which was like all the rage, it's like having an iPad, and I don't know if the iPad had come out just yet. This, in 2010 cost me $379. That was a big chunk. But I was so thrilled. I was so happy. And I got my nice little, uh, like a foam cover. And when I go out to a coffee shop or something, I'd bring it with me and read. Oh, it was great. People would ask me about it. It was great. I loved my Kindle DX. And after that, I got the, just, they just called it a Kindle. And then it started being called the Kindle Keyboard. At the time that this came out, it was just Kindle, and then they kept revising the models. And so that the one I ended up getting in 2010 was the Kindle 3G, and mine was able to get Wi Fi. That was the new thing that you could get 3G and Wi Fi. And the 3G was, from what I recall, it was the, the mechanism through which you could download your books from Amazon. And Amazon called their little system WhisperSync. It had such a cool name back then. Like, so here is my Kindle keyboard, 3G, and I got these really cool skins to put over them, which I just love. Then I have my nice little leatherette cover and the little thingies kind of, the rubber bands kind of worn out. But this 
was from Amazon. It says Amazon Kim Kindle on this little thing. I just thought it was the coolest stuff. It's in my favorite color, bad. And this one I turn on again by sliding the little thingy at the bottom. And this wakes up the Kindle, see? It's in green. Then it has your little list. Mine are, these are my collections that I have here. And if you can see the difference in size, that's why I wanted the DX. I thought it would be great. But I went ahead and got the keyboard because I wondered, well, if it's smaller, let me see, let me see how I like it. You'll notice the rounded, it was so much thinner than the first, first generation Kindle. And the page changes with the little tabs on the side, much like the DX, just a smaller, a smaller version of it. And this, I could get wide, that I could act, I could try to access the internet on this particular one, but it wasn't the greatest with internet. It just didn't have the functionality that you know your 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 desktop or even a laptop would have. But I was very happy with my little Kindle for the longest time. And this Kindle and my DX, when I when I uh, pulled them out of the closet that I had them stored in, they had dead batteries. And I tried to charge them and would, nothing was happening. And I thought maybe I had the wrong charging cord and did a little research online and thought maybe I just need to replace the batteries because they're from 2010. So that's what I did. I went on to eBay, as a matter of fact, right? eBay, yeah, eBay. And I was able to get replacement batteries for the DX and a replacement battery for the Kindle keyboard. And if you're planning on doing that, just be aware of which model of the Kindle keyboard that you have. I had chosen the wrong one for the Kindle keyboard. Mine was a, a model that started with a D and then a 09 something. So I had to return the one that I accidentally ordered and replace it. My Kindle keyboard at the time that I ordered it, my 3G, cost me $189. I don't know if that's how much it was selling for. Maybe it was, it was $189. And this one specifically is the third generation Kindle keyboard, third generation. My next one that I got, put this in its little case. This was just a couple of years later. I wanted to try out the color screens, so I went ahead and I got myself a Kindle Fire. Is this the coolest thing or what? And this was just awesome. It had a little color screen, and you see the books on here. Now, I think the books that I currently have, I can still view on this Kindle. Uh, on this Kindle and all the ones going forward. But the keyboard and the DX, I can no longer download any books to because it, uses a it used a different system and they didn't update it to the current models. Um, this, I remember when I had, I've been living back east for 13 years. I was living in Pennsylvania and I ended up moving back with my parents because mom and dad were getting older. Um, Dad had been diagnosed with Parkinson's, and even though he was still pretty independent when I uh, had moved in with him, um, once his illness started to speed up, uh, it, it, it was too much for mom. So I was there to, to help her out as well. And I had one of the rooms in my parents' house. It was the smallest room in the house. I was perfectly fine with that. And this was on my little desk next to my bed. I had this little twin bed, and next to it I had a, uh, an antique desk. And to my right was a little space, and then the closet. And at the end of my room was one bookcase. One bookcase. That's all the space I had for books. And this was my TV slash e-reader. Um, it was perfect. It's all I needed. Just It's all I needed for, for what I wanted to do. And I could 
Uh, it was great about this one because it's in color, as I could read um, journals, periodicals, etc., and see them in full color, which was helpful rather than the flat black and white one, a way that I'd see it, you know, on my other Kindles. So this lasted a long time, and I had this cool cover that I purchased. Isn't that neat? The artwork. And what was great about this is it had a little stand. So it just sat right there on my little desk. And if I wanted to watch a movie, I could do that on here. So this, this, this was a great little companion. And I have to figure out how to turn this off. Oh, well, I'll just close it because it should put it, it should fall asleep once I close it. Now this one, how much, I purchased this in 2010. This one had 16 gigabytes of, his, of uh, memory. This one cost me $210.94. Still did not cost me as much as the Kindle DX. Then, two years after that, they came out with the Kindle Voyage. And for some reason, I kept calling it Kindle Voyager. It's Kindle Voyage. And what was great about that is it reminded me of my Kindle keyboard, but it was smaller. So here's the size of the Kindle keyboard, right? And here is the Kindle Voyage. So you can see the difference. So this one was a little smaller, definitely lighter than this one, because if you look at the thickness on this one, compared, I'm gonna try to get a good angle on this. The thickness on this one, let's see if I can hold them side to side. See how thin that one is, and this one is still a bit thicker. Work. And see the difference and even this on its own I could feel more weight on it than the Kindle Voyage and the Kindle Voyage again I can download the same the same information on my Kindle Voyage that I had on my Kindle Fire and this one at the time that I purchased it which is interesting I don't know if I had some credits or a gift card someone must have given me a gift card for a birthday, Christmas, something, because this only cost me $51.74. So I had to have had a discount. It was going, let me see, it was on sale for anywhere from 200 to 220, depending if you wanted to have ads on it or no ads on it, or I don't know, Wi-Fi and something else, who knows, but it only cost me $51 and change. And with this one, everything was controlled on the screen. There were no keyboards down here. You just see Kindle right there's no keyboard down here. And this, I think I would turn it on by just, oh, hold on, I'm getting reacquainted again. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but on each side there's like these sort of whitish lines. And those are the sensors for turning the page. But I haven't used these in a while. I have to apologize. Oh, there it is, right here. Over here, see the space? There's a little button back here, and I would press it, and it starts to wake up the Kindle. And then I can do this, hopefully. There we go. And it would open up, and I would see my books. I could get cool images here, rather than just like the list that would that you would have with the, with the Kindle DX and the Kindle keyboard where it was just a list. This you could just swipe and you'd have the images of your books on there. So that's really cool. I loved this. this. This was just the coolest thing and I thought I'd be staying with this for a really long time. I got my really nice cover. This is a cloth cover because I love owls. And when you open it like this, I put this here, do this. I could pull this out like this. And it would be a stand so that I could read. Oh, I had so much fun with this. I really did. It was the coolest thing. So let me push the button on the back. It goes dark and it goes back to the sleepy page. And I close this off. This was my Kindle Voyage. I had that for a good while. And I purchased that in 2014. 
and I didn't purchase another Kindle until 2021. That was my Oasis. This is the cover that my Oasis is in, but if you look at it, you can see this comes out farther than here, but that really helps you to hold it like this. So I have my little cover, Amazon cover. We'll fold this back. It starts to wake up. See how it got brighter? And then you swipe. Oh, I have my, my password. I don't know why I'm worried about a password. No one here reads. And there we go. So now you can just swipe and boom. There we go. This is the la this is the most recent one that I purchased in 21. That was three years ago. And this is the one that I have consistently used whenever I've traveled. Um, I don't remember if I brought it with me to Europe a couple of months back. I might have. I don't know how often I used it. You can't always download when you're in a different country. You have to do something about that. I know I brought it with me when I would go visit my son, one of my sons back east. I would always bring this with me. It was great. When I made a visit to the Strand Bookstore in New York a couple of years back, I had brought this with me and I was reading Circe and The Song of Achilles on here. It was just fantastic. This, I put this in my purse when I'm heading out and this just slips in there really great. I love how I can hold it like this. And from what I understand, the Oasis is no, is, excuse me, is no longer being made. So I've got a one of a kind happening here. The Oasis, the thing about the Oasis, this battery lasts, of all my Kindles, this battery lasts the longest. It says it can last 28 hours. The cover. I never timed it. I just know that when I charged my DX and my Kindle keyboard, that Kindle keyboard just died so soon. If I left it unplugged, closed, I wasn't using it, within a day or two, easily, I had to recharge it. And for a while, I thought with my Kindle keyboard, I wasn't going to be able to plug it in, charge it, because I no longer had the cord. I think I accidentally put it in a bag of cords that I had given away. I was looking on eBay and not having any luck there. So finally, after I got the battery replaced, I just used my current Kindle charger on there, even though if you look at the little uh, little outlet in the Kindle keyboard, mine is just a nice, even oval. It's not narrow on the one end as opposed to the other. It's just a nice, even oval. And the current charger I have is, this, is an oval, but it's a little, little, uh, narrower on one on one side and wider on the other but it still worked it still charged them which is great and this oasis cost me two hundred twenty eight dollars eighty seven cents so yeah and then i saw and of course my most recent temptation is i keep looking at the kindle scribe telling myself don't got it with you and when you're in class, you can use that to read what you need to read. But you see, Kindle, it's a new thing to describe, and it's sparkly and new, and it distracts me. I'm like a dog around squirrels. It's just, it can just be disastrous. You know? So I've, so far, I have resisted the temptation to get myself a Kindle scribe. But don't hold your breath, because I might eventually just say, you know, the hell of it. <laughs> I need a Kindle scribe. Why not? I've got five. What difference is it going to make if I get, you know, another one? All right. Those are my Kindles. I'd love to see everybody else's Kindles. Have. I want to know if any of you have the first Kindle, that first white Kindle. Does it still work? Um, do you even still use it at all? I think it would be cool to hold on to one of those because you never know. I mean, what if 20 years down the line, 30 years down the line, maybe it's worth something. Maybe You never know. Thanks for hanging out, and if you feel so inspired, push that like and subscribe button. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.